Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, uh, Gwen, for the introduction. Um, it was 14 months ago this month that we stood in front of an audience in Vancouver and talked about the new discovery at Bain Hundi. And at that point, it was surface samples. We had uh, picked up up to 4,000 grams per ton at surface, multiple multi-ounce samples. And so things have uh, progressed very rapidly. Uh, we now have 96 holes in that project. Um, we've expanded the size of the system significantly. But this isn't a story that uh, is an overnight success. We've been in Mongolia. I have been for 20 years now, it'll be 20 years next month. And we've invested millions of dollars into exploring a particular belt of rocks in the southwest part of the country to arrive at what we have today. And as you'll see as we get into the story, it's not just one discovery, it's a new district. And this is such a rarity in our business to have gone into an area like this and uh, found what we have. There's just uh, so few of these opportunities left on the planet. So we're very excited to be able to share that with you today and very excited to have taken this from effectively satellite imagery down to boot and hammer and came up with what we have today. So I'll talk to you today about that district, about Bayan Hundi, which is the one that's really captured a lot of people's attention. But there's another project there called Alton Nar, which we'll speak to. Uh, we also have an alliance with Tech Resources. Tech is our largest shareholder at about 10%. And you have a group of people, in addition to myself, who have been in Mongolia for well over a decade, probably the most experienced team you'll find in that country uh, operating today. Some of those individuals are on our board. Chris Cowan, some of you may know, who have been around the industry for a long time. Chris is one of the uh, legends of uh, international exploration. Spent 40 years running Falcon Bridges Global Exploration. Recently, I've looked to add to the board. We've added two very significant individuals in terms of Mongolian experience. Canada's first ambassador to Mongolia, Dr. Anna Bielik, joined the board in June. And Leighton Croft, who is um, perhaps the most experienced in government affairs, community social responsibility in Mongolia. So a very strong board for a company of our size. Our market cap today is uh, approximately 100 million Canadian. We have 126 million shares outstanding and a very strong shareholder base. Uh, in addition to tech, we own 12% as uh, management directors. That's been growing steadily over the last several years. But because of my work in Asia, we have a number of institutions throughout Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, and London that are big shareholders of the company as well. And much of that shareholder base that you see in the retail category is high net worth family type offices in Eastern Canada. Speaking briefly to Mongolia, Oyotogoi obviously is what everybody hears about in this country. In the last uh, 12, 18 months, they have announced another $5.4 billion expansion. That expansion is being uh, funded by a collection of commercial and world banks. Export Development Canada is putting in 750 million US into that project. So that's driving the Mongolian economy effectively. But behind that, there's a number of other projects that have been successful, both in going to development and being acquired. Uh, QGX, some of you may remember in Canada, was bought out for 260 million by a private uh, Hong Kong group. Uh, Hunu Coal in Australia was taken out for 440 million by a private Thai group. So a lot of these projects that are taking place, you don't tend to hear about here in North America, but there is a disproportionate amount of M&A activity for a small group of juniors that have been involved in this country. This is why we're there. This belt of rocks that runs through southern Mongolia is virtually unexplored. And it's such a unique situation to have gone in there when I did in the 90s. It's unexplored because it was geographically isolated, but it was politically isolated and um, scientifically isolated. The Russians didn't believe in plate tectonics, so they had no knowledge of where these subduction zones should be. So for a number of reasons, it sat there unexplored. And we virtually had um, no competition out there in terms of solid, methodical regional exploration. And we've covered off 400 kilometers of that belt. And uh, we've done that with uh, a number of different joint venture partners today. That's tech. But uh, that's resulted in the projects I'm going to share with you now. Those two projects, Altanar and Bayan Hundi, are about 16 kilometers apart, sitting about 175 kilometers from the Chinese border crossing, where we can bring in plant and equipment through that, uh, through that uh, facility. So this is what uh, Bayan Hundi looks like. It's the least densely populated place on the planet. Uh, it's gently rolling hills, so good for development. And sitting at surface is more visible gold than I've ever seen in my career. There's, you can be out there for 10 minutes and pick up samples like you see on the left-hand side of that screen. 
So very well mineralized. When we first arrived, we thought high grade veins, perhaps a little bit of wall rock alteration. But now we're seeing these intersections that are 50, 100, 150 meters thick, and I'll show those to you. A little bit on the geology. What's important here is the two blue areas you see on your screen are the windows into the mineralized older rock. And those are poking up through younger cover, Cretaceous and recent sediments. And where this story really changed was some announcements we made beginning in October, but more importantly recently, where we began to hit out under that cover. And we hit some of the most substantial intersections we've seen to date. So in October, we had Stryker. Stryker has some very impressive intersections, as you can see here. The heart of it, 63 meters of 5 grams. I think we had 7 meters of 27 grams. Good continuity. But then we stepped out under cover, and we hit this, and we had 149 meters of 2 grams. Very consistently mineralized. I think the highest grade in that first hole was 19 grams. So very pervasive, perhaps the most pervasive mineralization we've seen to date. And that's opened that up to now 650 meters by roughly 400 meters, and it's open in all directions. You can see on that map on the left the gram meter map, and you can see the striker zone, which was fabulously rich, has now been dwarfed somewhat by the size and scale we've seen at midfield as we've gone out under that Cretaceous cover that to this point is averaging about 40 meters thick. So you get a sense of what this could look like from an open pit. We've got good geometry for an open pit. It looks like it'll be very good stripping ratio. And I'll come to the metallurgy. We've done some basic work on that as well in a moment. But it is oxidized down to uh, the deepest drilling we've done in that 150 meter range. 90 holes in this main area. There's 23% of the holes of intersections over an ounce, up to 9 ounces per ton. 30%, 37% of everything we've drilled is highly anomalous. And 30% of the holes ended in mineralization. This gives you a sense of some of those sections through midfield under cover, but you can see on the left-hand side as it goes out towards the west-southwest, 72 meters of 4 grams. We're typically seeing sort of 50 meters to a gram up to 70 meters of 4 through this undercover area. And then as we go out to the west, so this is stepping out, so we had a 430 meter by 600 meter area. Even out on the furthest reaches we've drilled on the west, we're getting intersections up to 30 meters of a gram, hitting 7 to 20 grams in some of the deeper holes. So a very large system. Uh, this is a low sulfidation system, so we're right at the surface uh, of one of these uh, types of mineralized um, of systems. And we've only drilled on average down 91 meters. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Cerro Negro or Cupel, and they can tend to go down to 200, 300 meters vertical. Um, <clears throat> so we're right at the very surface. Back to the metallurgy, we've uh, done two composite samples, a high grade and a low grade. 99% recovery in the high grade and 92% in the low grade. And that low grade was a composite from 13 different holes and quite low grade, 0.7. So with this oxidation and the simple metallurgy, we see this as a very uh, easy processing uh, system. So what's next for us? You have an area at uh, Midfield and Stryker that we'll drill off in detail this summer, but a wide area over 1.7 kilometers that we have evidence from geophysics and from some of the surrounding rock samples that will be mineralized. How intensely mineralized? Will we get more Midfields, more Strikers? We don't know that. But the most recent drilling undercover has given us the most pervasive, thickest zones of mineralization. This is a district, as I mentioned. Not only do we have Bainhundi, we have Altanero, we have Altanar, and in this area, a number of porphyry systems as well. <clears throat> Three kilometers north, we put in a couple scout holes in October. 23 meters, or sorry, 23 grams over two meters. Again, broad zones of mineralization needs to be followed up on. The other project we have in the portfolio, Altanar. We already have a quarter million ounces of about two grams gold equivalent. This is a slightly different system, gold, silver, lead, zinc. This had a bit of a game changer in December as well. Just before Christmas, we announced a hole where we had tested a structure in the center of this, and it returned 110 meters of 10 grams. The core of that was 14 meters of 55 grams. We don't understand the geometry of this yet. I would suggest the true width is closer to what you see along the bottom of the screen in that 20 to 30 meter range. Nonetheless, it's a new style of mineralization at the structural intersection, a gold copper sulfide as opposed to the, uh, the other type. So it's going to be a very busy year of drilling, focused on buying Hyundai and a number of other targets to follow up on. Um, but 
we're first in a new district. We have 100% interest in these projects. It's very rare to have this opportunity, I think, as an investor to come into projects like this at the very beginning, just as resources are starting to ramp up. The market is catching up with the story, but the upside in this is tremendous. Thank you very much.